which is triangular. We've got two panels on the side that look triangular, but they're not. Okay, they're basically incorporating the contours on the sides. And then we've also just got the big panel in the back, which incorporates everything from behind the ear through to the middle. What I want to do is put in a very strong line here at the front to frame. If I just include this little strip that's on the frontal heel in my section, what I actually have now is a really nice little guide. So I'm just going to use the head shape here to help me create the length that I want. And I'm going to do that all the way until I hit the back, the very back. And guys, what shape is the head in, in the back? Like, if we think about the shape from here on down, it's pretty flat, isn't it? So actually, this round line becomes somewhat square to the back, okay? especially through the, the very back. I'm gonna go a little bit short with that. time we're just connecting that back panel through to the side still there's the drive behind it nice and clean and we're just going to round layer that all the way through until we hit the bottom of the contour on the side you can see there's not tons of length coming off either lastly then we work that into a nice clean square vertical cutting line through the sides I'm just using that guide from the top.
gonna break everything up nicely now and create some nice movement, yeah? So I'm really making sure that I'm getting between the sections, getting between the hair. And that's just gonna break up that layer. Coming all the way to the front. And notice how I'm not going right to the bottom, but I'm coming maybe about an inch into the hair. And I'm just shattering all of that that's there. So guys, with this taper, I'm using what we call the descending technique. So with the descending technique, I've placed in my base length first, which is the number two. Then I place in the zero line, and then all I'm doing is working down to that zero line with each guard. Now the one open. Then the one. So when we look at this hair though, visually we can see that through the back it's something internally that's quite, uh, you know, flat, right, which, which easily kind of brings us to a layer, something that reduces weight, okay. Equally does with, with a mullet, you can graduate that as well, believe it or not, yeah, it's not, a mullet is not fixed, it doesn't have to be cut one way. The way we've done it in this case is very simply we've created a round layer through all of the curvature of the head on the top. 
Okay, so everything along the contours into the crown was round. Everything beneath that was square. We then moved on to the two corner panels where again we worked something round through here and then something a little bit more square through here. Lastly, we added the taper through the sideburns just to add a bit of fresh appeal. And lastly, I just finessed the fringe with the finger razor. It didn't take much length off. Uh, if anything, we just took a little bit of length off. Through the middle, lots of point cutting to break all this hair up because we didn't layer it. So I don't generally want to just leave the hair to walk out of here. Okay, because it hasn't been cut in a few weeks, so next week it might be too heavy. So I went through and I point cut everything just to make sure that was all loose, and that was it. Okay, so what we did to start, we separated everything on the frontal, yeah? And what we learned from yesterday was that the frontal section isn't just limited to this little triangular strip or what's on the hairline. The frontal is the entire part of the curvature, the front of the head, where the apex dips into the front. So we separated all that out. Reason is we wanted to create quite a strong bevel fringe all along the front. Once we had that focal point in, we built the rest of the haircut around that, yeah, where we essentially graduated off that point on into the sides to really build this very accentuated triangular shape at the back there as well, yeah. Same thing on the other side, some very classic cross graduation. And then literally we just left everything underneath that very disconnected, we didn't really touch that. We just chipped into it ever so slightly and softened it with the feather razor. The rest of the haircut was very visual, guys. And then the texture, we point cut it some bits, we chipped in with the thin and shear, we used the finger razor to refine bits of the lock here. Again, this is all disconnected. This is basically picking out different shapes and marrying them together to overall really make a nice, fluid, complete shape. 